the main impacts of the Holocaust on Jewish belief are uh, generally speaking a lot more diverse than we would actually usually think of it being mainly because the Jewish community itself and Jewish theology is a lot more diverse so there are really as many different kind of responses as there are um, Jewish theologians and or factions within um, Jewish society and intellectual life as well. What we tend to see is that a lot of the older more traditional responses, uh, responses based in scripture like um, punishment for sin, this kind of thing, this has fallen by the wayside, it's been pushed more to the periphery for the most part. There are some more traditional ends of the community which um, still seek to explain suffering and evil um, through that kind of explanation, but for the most part theology has generally become much more fragmented in how it responds to suffering and especially the suffering of the Holocaust itself. This has led to what some people have called um, the emergence of anti-theodicies, which is um, a concept to do with rejecting all the usual um, ways to actually explain suffering. Not so much atheism, um, not a complete failure of belief or rejection of belief, but the idea that all the usual theodicies no longer work. Now what this has led to, in my own opinion at least anyway, is the emergence of a kind of middle way between these two major responses. The usual theodic responses, the kind of much more um, impassioned anti-theodic responses, and in the middle we have the emergence of what I would call atheodicy, which is attempts to live with suffering and evil, but also without the explanations, without full explanations anyway, that would usually be offered. So the great question for um, some Ju uh, Jewish theologians going forward is, um, can this be done? Can we live in a kind of post-theodic era? Can theology cope in a post-theodic era without the full explanations of suffering and evil? Most of these responses, especially the more fragmentary or kind of radical responses, um, tend not to have made it to the kind of centre of the discourse. Um, there's a lot of questions about how to respond, but the answers that have been offered are usually problematised in a variety of ways, and this is why it's kind of um, quite a cutting-edge area of uh, contemporary Jewish theology, in that some of them are asking, can we actually change the central concepts um, that we hold and have historically held very close or to be very true about God. Over the last thousand years or so, there was um, the emergence of the kind of grand mystical traditions, which for a few centuries became uh, very dominant and then died away in the kind of post-enlightenment period uh, where the rise of reason, this kind of thing, generally um, pushed mysticism under the carpet, as it were. But now a number of radical theologians are kind of um, recovering these mystical traditions and recovering some of the central ideas from it and are seemingly trying to um, construct new theologies from these new old ideas that have been um, out of favour for a good 200 years or so.